This new science shows us that spirit cannot be separated from matter. We are part of an immense field of consciousness which sustains not only our world, but the entire cosmos. Schrodinger, Owen Schrodinger, who was a very great scientist, said this, I consider science to be an integrating part of our endeavor to answer the one great philosophical question which embraces all the others, the one that Plotinus expressed by his brief, who are we? And more than that, I consider this not only one of the tasks, but the task of science, the only one that really counts. Now we've had three avenues through which to pursue our quest for knowledge and understanding. One is through religion, another is through science, which in our secular culture seems to have replaced religion. But there is a third way, a direct way, known to contemplatives and shamans of every culture for thousands of years, which connects our human consciousness with the deep ground of cosmic consciousness. This third way, has consistently revealed that the universe has an inner life as well as an outer form, and that we live within a sacred cosmic order of reality. 96% of the universe is invisible. When we look out at the starry night sky, at the great galaxies and the planets of our own solar system, we're looking only at 4% of the universe. 73% of what we do not see is called dark energy, and 23% is called dark matter. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN started up again April 5th of this year. $13 billion has been spent on it so far. By smashing protons together, it is currently trying to find the elusive particles that constitute dark matter and dark energy. The standard model has not so far been able to answer the questions, what is the universe made from? Or what is dark matter that is apparently holding the galaxies together? And dark energy that is, seems to be expanding the overall size of the universe? The science of unified physics gives us a new story, and this is what's so important. The proof that the whole universe is a unified field. We live within a cosmic web of life which underlies and connects all forms in our universe. Every atom of life interacts with every other atom. None of us is truly separate from others, nor from the greater life of the universe in which our lives are embedded. So first, we need to understand the field, what it is and how it fills all space. Beneath the universe we see is an underlying field or matrix, like a fabric woven of energy, or a lattice, or a web of inconceivable dimensions. There is no such thing as empty space. Space is full and it's absolutely seething with energy. Now scientists use different names to describe this underlying field or matrix, and it is called space-time as well as the following names. As you already know, I'm sure, the quantum vacuum or the quantum plenum, the implicate order, which was the phrase used by David Bohm, the zero-point field, the ether, which was a term used by Einstein, the Akashic field, which is used in Indian cosmology, dark energy and dark matter, and the sea or ocean of light, and finally, the Planck field, which I'm going to talk about shortly. Now, an astrophysicist called Bernard Heche tells us that the electromagnetic quantum vacuum is a form of light. It is an underlying sea of energy that permeates every tiny volume of space, from the emptiest intergalactic void to the depths of the Earth, the Sun, and our own bodies. Our world of matter is like the visible foam atop a very deep ocean of light. I think that's the most marvelous statement. This vast field, matrix, or fabric of space-time extends over the whole universe. This is Nassim's statement. We can't see this field, but we are an intrinsic part of it. 
Dark energy and dark matter are synonymous with this underlying field. Imagine it as a vast integrating network that is imprinting all information holographically and fractally instantaneously. Nassim is a most charming man, I may say, delightful teacher. He also says that we can't separate consciousness from this field because the field itself is consciousness, imprinting, exchanging and transmitting information every nanosecond. Consciousness orders and organizes the field and its complex interconnected systems at all levels and the evolution of the universe itself. We are part of this stupendous organization of energy. We are part of that consciousness. Now the entirety of space-time is full of fields, from the electromagnetic field of a single atom, to that of each single cell in our body, to the heart's electromagnetic field, and to the fields of the Earth and the Sun and the hundred billion galaxies. The whole of what we call space is full of electromagnetic fields of different magnitudes, all interacting with each other. Now, in the dynamic of each electromagnetic field is that it's polarized. But it is one field with two polarities interacting with each other. If there were no opposite polarity, there would be no movement. And this applies to all the mul multiplicity of fields. This is an image of the electromagnetic field of the Earth, which has a toroidal form. And here, is an image of the electromagnetic field of the heart. Each one of our hearts extends from 8 to 12 feet beyond the body. So if you think about your body, you're extending practically to the end of the row. Uh, each one of us is, is interacting with the fields of every, everybody else's field. Our heart is connected to all the vital organs of the body, which are also tiny fields. And in the adult, the electromagnetic field of the heart is 500, more, 500 times more powerful than that of the brain. Yet how little attention we pay to the heart. It's really the key to everything. The, this is the second point, that the universe, cons sorry, the third point, the universe consists of vibratory oscillations. The basic particles in the field are oscillating and vibrating inconceivably rapidly, so rapidly that there is no apparent space between them. This electromagnetic oscillation is the ground state of the universe. And this continuous oscillation is so rapid that it makes matter appear to us as stable and solid. So beneath the stability of our bodies and this room and the floor and the building is this state of oscillation. Isn't that amazing? I think it's extraordinary. A physicist called Paul Davis sums up this extraordinary fact in these words. The universe is not a collection of objects, but is an inseparable web of vibrating energy patterns in which no one component has reality independently from the entirety. And included in the entirety is the observer which is ourselves. So this is Nassim's definition of consciousness. Consciousness is a dynamic of the interchange of information at the cellular, atomic, and Planck field levels. The field is informing us constantly, and we are informing the field. The field is expanding. The entire universe is aware of itself and is exchanging information. Now, Irvin Laszlo, who's written more books than any other human being, writes in his latest one, which is called The Immortal Mind, the brain does not produce consciousness, it transmits and displays it. And another distinguished psychiatrist called Ian McGilchrist, who I'm sure you know, who wrote a wonderful book called The Master and His Emissary, said the brain is a transceiver of consciousness. And when I was preparing this talk, a friend of mine in Glasgow found this quote on the internet and sent it to me. It's from 
a South Korean scientist called Daejeon Song, and he's put up on the internet this sentence, the brain and consciousness are linked together, but the brain does not produce consciousness. Consciousness is something altogether different and separate. The math does not lie. That was his final sentence. And Nassim finally, looking for consciousness inside the brain is like looking in a radio for the announcer. <laughs> He's got some other ones too, which I haven't put in. <laughs> So the implications of these statements are huge because with the new science proving that the brain is not the origin of consciousness, the whole edifice of materialism collapses. So Nassim Haraman suggests that as we extend our awareness to the entire planet, the feedback loop with the underlying field is extended and amplified. If we could extend it to reach the galactic level, we would get more feedback from that level. In other words, nature, matter, energy, the quantum field, all communicate with us, and it's high time we began to communicate with them. The more conscious of this we are, the more they will communicate. There is constant interaction between the quantum ground and its manifestations. Through the emerging science of unified physics, a new cosmology is being born. A new vision of our profound relationship with an intelligent, living and interconnected universe. Unified physics shows the holistic nature of the universe. Everything and everyone is connected to the whole. There is no such thing as inanimate matter. We can't separate consciousness from matter or matter from the pulsing electromagnetic field of light that is the ground of the universe. The process of evolution is an extraordinary expansion of information or consciousness that has led to the human being on this planet who can begin to look back at the whole evolutionary process from which we have come. Through conscious empathic connection, we can begin to attune our consciousness with the underlying presence of this field.